Hey guys, welcome back to my series, Trial by Fire, where I am trying to grow my apps to 10K a month in revenue by the end of this year, or else I'm gonna be forced to shut down the business and go back to having my normal nine to five job. And to additionally motivate myself, I am only spending the revenue I make from my apps week over week, and I am sharing how much revenue I make, how much money I'm spending, and the behind the scenes of building my apps. Okay, so today is week one of updates. Let's get into my revenue, my spending, and the progress I made on my apps. For revenue, it was a pretty slow week, and I knew this would happen because I was focusing more on Inkberry and not Todoi. Inkberry is my wedding planning app, and it is still very early stage. It's currently my newest app, and it's not monetized, whereas Todoi, my social to-do list app, is the first app I made, and it is currently my main revenue stream. I focused on Inkberry and not Todoi, this week, I knew the revenue would slow down a bit. The main reason for that is because my to e growth primarily comes from my organic social media marketing where I will post TikToks, post on Instagram, promoting to e I think it's kind of a difficult situation I put myself in where if I don't actively market to e the growth stagnates. That's something I'm still trying to figure out more. I think I might experiment with running some ad spend on to e I'm going to try that out potentially and then see how it goes. By the way, make sure to subscribe if you want to follow along as I make weekly updates in the trial by fire series. All in all, the revenue this week was really small, $43 made all on Todoi. I will say there is some low hanging fruit on Todoi that I know will increase revenue. One would be to add information about ProDoi to the onboarding screen, which currently I don't have. So I think a lot of users sign up for Todoi without knowing about the pro features that are available. The second one is that there are not a lot of default reminder notifications that help new users build the habit of using Todoi. This is something that I've gone back and forth between because I didn't want the notifications to be annoying in the beginning, but now I'm starting to think more that they're obviously very critical, especially for new users to remember to use this brand new app. I think I might invest a little bit of time to improve these low hanging fruit, but all in all, I am in a position now where I want to spend less time on Todoi. I'll get more into that later. Spending was $58. I want to say this first week of of the money updates, the revenue and the spending is really boring in my opinion because not a lot happened. I basically spent money on food and exercising. Yeah, $58, um, I don't know. Is, does it sound like a lot to you? Because it's like an impressively small amount in my ears. Okay, I'm a little shook. I got a burger and fries and a beer and it cost $28.56, almost $30. I will say it was nice to basically have an excuse to not do anything and just focus on work. I consider myself pretty extroverted. I love going out and hanging out with friends, going to restaurants. But as I get older, I've been trying to enjoy being a homebody more and going to sleep early and having a good sleep schedule, eating healthy home cooked meals that make me feel energized and good. So yeah, it sounds really lame but that is what your late 20s is like, it turns out. Anyways, let's move on. Okay, so this week in review, I wanted to kind of do the sprint style update status thing in every week of this series because it's kind of like what you do when you work at a tech company on an engineering team where you operate in sprints. At the end of each sprint, you talk about what was accomplished, what's the upcoming work for the next sprint. That's a format that I'm familiar with. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with because I feel like a lot of my viewers work in tech. This this week in review, I decided on the core Inkberry feature, which I'm really excited about. I had been doing a bunch of research to figure out what was going to be that core feature, and I'm really happy to have settled on digital invites. I'll go into each of these a bit more in detail, but just to go through them, Todoi had an outage and I had to do a bunch of bug fixes. So that was the other thing that took up a bunch of my time this week. As I was saying earlier, I want to get into a position where there's a bit less overhead with Todoi and I'm not spending so much time on it, I would like to have a bit more of focus on working on Inkberry. The other thing I want to call out is I'm excited to have reached 2,000 followers on Instagram. This is meaningful to me because as TikTok is potentially going to get banned, it's important to me as a creator to diversify my following portfolios. My main audience right now is on TikTok. That's where I have the biggest following. I don't know. As a creator, it definitely gives me 
some degree of anxiety that TikTok is either going to get banned or at a minimum, I think the product is going to get largely negatively affected through all of this political dramas. I have been trying to grow my audience elsewhere and diversify it. So, okay, let's go into each of these in a bit more detail. Let's talk about Inkberry invites. There are several wedding planning features that were options for what I could focus on. There's the checklist, there's this guest list and invitations, there's a registry, there's budgeting, there's seating charts. There are so many of these. My criteria for picking the feature for Inkberry was a few things. One, I wanted it to be a pure tech solution. So if you wanted to build a registry, then you have to work with brands that are selling the products. I wanted to go for something that was a pure tech solution that I knew I could crank out really quickly. Two is I wanted the feature to be something that was a top priority in the eyes of the bride and groom getting married. A lot of other features such as checklist and budgeting are things that feel important, but they're not actually accomplishing a mandatory task in wedding planning. One could plan their wedding without budget tracking, but you can't plan a wedding without sending invites. I wanted to pick something that is absolutely necessary for wedding planning because it is much easier to monetize a product that is absolutely necessary. The other reason I really liked the invites option was because most of the tools currently available for invitations are lacking or at a minimum just feel outdated. So what do I want to do? I want to build a super clean, sleek, modern feeling invitation guest list feature. These are very early designs, but I'm pretty excited about the direction this is headed. I'm going to make this feel super smooth, super efficient. Let's jump over into next week's goals. The goal is to have a working MVP for Inkberry guest list feature. The guest list feature is not the invitation portion. It's the part where you can just create the list list of your guests. The other one, as I've been mentioning throughout this video, is how can I reduce to do overhead? I want to say for the last few months, as I've been trying to step away from working on to do as much, I probably spend somewhere between five to 10 hours a week on to do And as I get more and more into Inkberry, I know that I need to decrease that work amount for to do because I just have a limited amount of time. The way I'm going to do it is I want to do more scheduled releases of the app and I want to do approximately one release a month. By scheduling it and planning it, I will alleviate a lot of this like mental stress burden situation I've created for myself. I feel this constant pressure to improve on to do It's basically a compulsive nature that I have where left to my own devices, I feel this compulsive need to constantly work on to just because it feels like my baby. It was my first app. I have so many users on there that really love to do and I always like really want to improve the app for them, but I know that I need to create this structure for myself. And I think it's a win-win because I will get a lot of my time back and my to do users will still get regular improvements. The obvious last goal is to continue this trial by fire YouTube series. If I successfully upload this video on the schedule I want to, which is Monday, it will be my first time I successfully upload on a week by week schedule. Making these YouTube videos is a lot of work. It's kind of felt like Spartan training for me. I think as a engineer, just the part of my brain that's needed to make this content is so different that maybe that's why it feels like a lot of work and I'm just, I'm not that good at it yet, but I know that as I practice, it'll get easier. I just wanted to say, I'm so thankful for all of the amazing support that you guys have given me on my first video last week. I've read through every single comment and I have never received such a positive load of comments before on a YouTube video. Everyone's just been incredibly supportive and and so many kind words have been said. I'm really thankful for that. I'm really excited to just share the raw and sometimes sad and depressing, but sometimes really exciting behind the scenes of building apps. So that's a wrap for week one updates. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I just wanted to remind you that if you have any suggestions, feedback, concerns, questions, please comment them down below. I am reading and responding to every single comment. I have been loving being able to talk to you guys through the comments. I'll see you in the comments. Excited to talk to you guys again. And yeah, I'll be back next week with week two updates.